People love playing with me, but hate it. When I play back, what goes around comes around. I just want to get right into it. Hi, everybody. What's up, everybody? <laughs> How are you guys doing today? Look at this, Perry. Is this from Somali? Somalia? Is that? Allie, where are you from? I'm thinking, does that mean Somalia, Somali land? That, that's Somalia, right? Or it's small Africa, world. I think. Yeah, I don't know. Yes. Anyway, welcome, welcome, welcome. Hi, everybody. Okay, so lots going on today. So right after I do this video, I'm going to go live again, maybe five, ten minutes later, and talk about what I found out about Melody Hope. So, and it, it couldn't wait till tomorrow. I had to talk about that today. Hold on. That's Somalia. Yeah. That's Somalia. Okay. Thank you, Claire. I appreciate that. Um, so I'm going to go right after that and talk about all that mess that's going on over there. And I said I was going to look into it. I didn't think it would be that quick. <laughs> like people start talking. Okay. So uh, we'll do that. But I still have to do what my main channel is about, and that's my hot topics. We're going to talk about Wendy Williams. We love Wendy over here. Uh, I'm sure you guys all heard about it uh, now that uh, the conservator, Sabrina, is going to sue Kevin. I'm sure you heard about it because it was later in the day, but I still need to talk about it and tell you my opinions. We're going to talk about Shirley Strawberry finally getting a divorce. She's probably crying right now. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Shirley Strawberry, in my opinion, do not want a damn divorce, okay? Because we've been knowing about the uh, animals, okay? We've been knowing about it, Shirley. And did you make up with your daughter yet? I heard that you did, and some other content creator said you did. I hope you do. Uh, then we're going to talk about Shine Barrows. Oh, and people saying that he's going to reopen the case for... It was back in the 99, maybe, about uh, when Diddy pow powed a person in the face. We're going to talk about what he says about that. Then we're going to talk about DJ Academics and Donald Trump Jr. I can't stand it. I cannot stand it. it, it so we'll, we'll talk about that last. Because I'm not going to tell you who to vote for for president. That's not my job. I'm going to tell you about this interview that's just, you know, DJ Academics, what is happening to you? Like, oh my God, I thought you was cool. Okay, but uh, you got some stuff going on here. Let's start out with the two quick ones. Let's talk about Wendy Williams. I don't even have the thing. Uh, let's talk about Wendy Williams and that no good ex-husband of hers, that no good broke ass, oops. <laughs> ex-husband. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I see you right. He just, he just, ooh, he makes the skin under my nails itch. I can't stand uh, Kevin. He just takes advantage of her any way and anyhow that he can. So in his own paperwork that he submitted, because he's trying to reinstate his uh, monthly payments. <laughs> <laughs> now, the ghetto cookie show, you know you cutting up. Why is V in the chat? Thank you, V, for being here. We know you're busy, so uh, you can just leave. Look look at my mom. Mommy dearest, I know you're busy, so you should go. <laughs> but thank you for showing up. Anyway, so he is trying to reinstate his uh, monthly payments. 
Kevin is. And in the paperwork, <laughs> it's kind of funny. He wrote in there that he was paid from this date to this date. And the court noticed that it he shouldn't have been paid those last two, three, four months it was. Uh, in the tune of a hundred and was it hundred and twelve or hundred twenty two thousand? I want to say it's one hundred and twelve thousand. One hundred and twelve thousand. Yeah. And so now, Susan, Sabrina, pardon me, is suing Kevin to get that money back. But I have I have some news for you. Okay, that money's gone, Sabrina. <laughs> well, I mean, she's gonna have to get in the long line and wait for that payment. <laughs> Well, Baldi says, why can't he get a job? I don't know. I don't know. And it's really right. just hard to watch. This man is taking advantage of her in any and every way that he could. He doesn't let an opportunity go by with him being the bigger man and realizing that she has dementia. You're suing a person in the early stages of dementia. Well, he's robbing from them. He's Yeah, you're yeah, he's, robbing. He's, yeah. Thank you, yeah. Sandra. You're robbing a woman with dementia. You saw the uh, documentary that we all seen and you won't give it a break. Yeah. I don't get it, Sherelle. I mean, I don't understand why Kevin seriously don't just grow up, be a man. Look, Wendy don't gave you more than what you would have ever made on your own. Mm -hmm. Now mm -hmm. it was your choice to go and be the creeper of the night. <laughs> if you're going you to cheat and do all that stuff, have, be man enough to take responsibility yeah. for it. Yeah. It's not Wendy's responsibility to take mm -hmm. care of you, mm -hmm. your side piece, mm -hmm. and your baby. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, enough is enough already, and I hope they can get the money, but they got to get in the long line. The nerve, okay, people, the nerve of you thinking that you're just going to take her for everything that she's got. It just shows you never loved her, never, and you've always been a taker. People like you, you know, it's going to backfire on you. You're never going to have money again. And I see why your son is upset with you and not talking to you. Like, he doesn't even care about any of that. If my son stopped talking to me, I stop what I'm doing right then and there, and that gets fixed. Mm -hmm. So we're on the same page. My son's an adult now. I don't never want my son not talking to me. And ain't no problem big enough that I can't fix with my son. But he don't care. He's more worried about hanging out to Sabrina, uh, Serena, Sharina, because she left him because uh -huh. he went broke. Now he's up here lying to her, talking about, don't worry about the baby. I'll get the money back. We'll get it back. Child, please. And I'll get my tax return. We back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. he needs to give it up. He made that choice to leave Wendy and leave her finances to yeah. go with uh, a little side chick. I always forget her name. I always want to say Sabrina. Her name's but... Sharina, and they call her Nikki. Right, okay, yeah. Child, it's just sad. You're suing a person that is in their first stages of dementia. Who does that? So that's all I wanted to say about his slimy ass. You want to say something else, Perry? No, that's about it. He just needs to get a job and buckle up his bootstraps and, and do, I mean, if you're going to walk the walk, walk the walk. Yeah. That's it. You know what? I didn't even think to do this. I was going to talk about Shirley Strawberry next and her finally filing for a divorce. And I didn't realize I should have pulled the papers, but I was so busy. But it anyway, I mean, it's, it's, it's overdue. OK, so, I mean, at this point. Are we impressed that she's finally getting a divorce? No, this should have been happening during the first court hearing in which they said he's not allowed to be around animals. Girl, don't act like you didn't know. I just, I'm just so disappointed in Shirley. People say, you know, she didn't know and she's human and people make mistakes. Yeah, that's right. I get that. But not these kind of mistakes, not mistakes that involve my damn daughter and my damn granddaughter and my dog probably. <laughs> Like yeah. Shirley Strawberry. I don't even know what to call you. Um, you're beyond selfish. You knew <laughs> he was a schemer for a long time. Hell, I think even Steve Harvey knew. Yeah. So there's just no explaining yourself. And I just will never look at her the same. Am I being too harsh, Perry? I mean, personally, I don't think so. I mean, you know, no parent is perfect. If she reconciled with her daughter and making it better... I mean, you know, I guess we can't hate her for bad judgment for dating a pimp, you know. <laughs> he 
is a joke. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a joke. <laughs> I mean, listen, I'm going to say this. Uh, hi, Stephanie. She says, Kevin is filled with so much greed and evilness. Evil. Right. Evil. Who takes somebody to court that you uh, loved at one time in your life? The mother of your child. I said what I had to say. But <laughs> now back to Shirley Strawberry. Um, people say don't go so hard on her. Um, you know, and she didn't know. I don't play with people that don't take care of children. Right. Okay. I, so I got to hold her ass accountable. Any kind of kid. I, it could be the neighbor across the street. If I see a kid that needs some help, I'm going to give that kid some help because they can't do it for themselves. They're the most vulnerable. Whoever takes advantage of children, something wrong with you. Now, if it was my granddaughter, y'all know how I am about my granddaughter. I done brought her on the show a couple times. Like, I don't play when it comes to my grandkids. Like, I have a special relationship with my children. I love them and all that. But something about the grands. The grandkids are just special. And I they're adorable, aren't they? Yeah. They are. I have the yeah. cutest grandkids, and they're my heart. If somebody, if I dreamt about somebody messing with my grandkids, it's over for you. Right. No, I, I get you. You know what's really like, I, I don't agree with Shirley being with the kids and stuff. That was totally messed up. We have dogged her enough at this point. If she can reconcile and realize her mistakes and try to, you know, fix it, I would, you know, I mean, but it could be very damaging what, what she let happen. I get that. But hopefully I at least she can try to redeem herself and work on her relationship. Now, look, look at Miss Ladang being messy here. Why is she divorcing a bigamist? <laughs> she's tired of being, you know what? And, and she ain't divorcing because she don't want him no more. She's divorcing because she's tired of being the seventh wife. <laughs> I don't understand, Shirley Strawberry. Okay, some women are desperate and they'll do anything for a husband. I get that. Nobody wants to be die alone. I get that. So let me try to try to be compassionate to her. Nobody wants to die alone. We all want to be in a relationship. Got it. But you got to have standards for yourself. It's got to be things that you don't accept. I don't want a man at any cost. Yeah. And Perry, you don't know nothing about this. I'm talking to them weak women. They know who they are. That just anything for a man. Oh, I, I can't. I just can't. It's just. You know, so anyway, maybe I'll read your court paper tomorrow if I feel like it, if I'm not too busy. But but if not, if you don't read it, I mean, uh, your girl Pam got it. Pam did it. Uh -huh. Everybody, if you want to know the details of the divorce and what was in the paperwork, go to Pam Esquire. She's got it. She reads documents. Right. She's brilliant. I love her. Go to Pam. She'll break it down for y'all. Well, so I'm, I'm, I'm tired of Shirley's ass. I just hope that maybe she could have learned, like, you know, she, she put her family through a lot, herself through a lot, dealing with that backyard pimp. But I just hope <laughs> next time she meets somebody, it's not because they freshly got out of jail. I hope she, <laughs> hope she meets somebody in church. That could be more of her speed. You know, the, the guy sitting on the front row with that fan. That's the kind of guy she needs. Perry, stop. You know, with damn suspenders on. You know, <laughs> slow motion, slow motion. You know, I'm laughing, but Shirley, maybe you should go to church. <laughs> right, I mean, just, somebody with some morals. I always thought she was a church going girl just by her facade. Yeah, just for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I don't know how you ran across Billy Bob, Wild Freak, Ernesto. <laughs> it's crazy anyway uh so that's what i wanted to i gotta keep my eye on the time oh we're doing good because i'm trying to not go a full hour today i'm trying to go 40 minutes okay uh let's talk about do we want to talk about shine first or dj academics how many people are in the chat let's talk about shine <clears throat> shine barrel okay so everyone's going around saying that shine threw diddy under the bus uh, said that for the first time he said that he took the blame, the fall for Diddy. And uh, they're saying that Shine wants the case reopened. That's not how it read on the neighborhood talk. It said that the woman that got pow pow in the face wants the case right, reopened. Right, right. Now, I've talked about this before. They're not reopening that case. So, Shine, let's talk about Shine. 
Shine has gained all of my respect. He is a very unique, spiritual, smart individual. So back in the day, back in the 90s, the the argument started with a guy named Scar. Those were all Shine's friends, including mm-hmm. the girl that got pop out in the face. That was his friend that he knew from a long time ago. Okay, so he he came and they were, I don't want to call them gangbangers. They were pharmaceutical techs. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? They did uh, illegal things on the street and they were what people would, classify as a thug. And I don't mean that to the girl that got pow pow on the shape uh, in the face. I'm just saying they they're from uh, okay, this ain't working out. How what am I saying Perry? They're from the street uh, life. Yeah, street say that? professionals that had a problem with Diddy. They didn't have a problem with Shine. Mm-hmm. Words got crossed up and things went left. There you go. Things went left. And uh He's admitted it. This is not the first time that he said that he took the fall for Diddy. Now, he, I thought he was crazy because I, I, I ain't taking the blame for anybody, mm-hmm. especially if I didn't do it. Right. And, and then he also said that Diddy set him up, said he was going to pay for his attorney fees, and then stops, also gets a not-so-good lawyer while he has Johnny Cochran. I'm not exaggerating or trying to be funny. No, no. He had Johnny Cochran. Right. So it's not even so much that I feel like he took the total fall at the time. Mm-hmm. I think he was thrown under the bus by Diddy. Yeah. Diddy had representation and he didn't. And allegations at the time is that Diddy had paid off everybody in the club. You know, the the, the uh, look of Sears, you know, the witnesses and had them verify certain stories. That's how Shine got thrown to the wolves. And at that point, he did pow pow some stuff now he he never claimed to have hit somebody in the face right 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 but right. so but I still, I, i'm not taking said, hey. the fall for you mm-hmm. i cannot be gone 10 years i just can't i can't do one day i can't do two hours i'm not a prison chick <laughs> i would lose it mentally i that's like going and sitting in my closet for 10 years right I don't do, I, I get claustrophobic. I, I'm just not a prison chick. But he was living by some crazy street code. But he did something that nobody else did. Not a lot of few people. Not a lot. He changed in there. He clung to his Jewish faith. He became a changed man. Mm-hmm. Then he came out, and people think when he came out, he had money. No. And not only that, then they deport your but. Back to Belize Mm -hmm. that you don't know nothing about because you were raised here in the United States in New York. Mm -hmm. So for me, people that don't harbor hatred in their heart and all of that, I'm just really impressed. And then he went back there and yeah, his father was uh, the first, I can't call him African-American, black uh, prime minister. Uh, Doesn't mean that Shine had a shoe in the Congress. So this is impressive stuff to me. So I just love, love Shine. And he has a big, huge respect in the rap community because everybody know what he did. So listen to uh, the way that when he went on Drink drink Champs, hold on, let me see if I can pull that up. Uh, Just how much respect Nori was giving him, okay? Yeah. He was like, man, what he did. So now he has a big, huge amount of respect. This is not working. In uh, the street world, the rap world, stuff like that. So just take a listen to this. Now, I got two of them. I hope this will work. Man says to the left of us right now, not only was a person that came up was honorable in the streets, held it down came and I believe this is the first time we heard Bad Boy gave a million dollar deal. And then I heard it was another million on publishing. This dude, I can't lie to you, I was there, I saw it. He had one of the biggest buzzes in New York City and I would be wrong if I say New York City because he had one of the biggest buzzes in the industry. People were looking for a savior 
after Biggie Smalls, and this was the guy people came into, invested into. He got into one of the craziest incidents in New York City's history. He held it down, held it down like a man, came home, did, it, did what he had to do, came home, uh, became a part of the government of Belize changed his whole life around. And every aspect of everything he did, he was real with it, and he's still being real with it now. In case you don't know what we talk about, we talk about Sean, motherfucking, no, but not Pose, no, excuse me. Excuse me, excuse me, what's up? We talk about motherfucking Sean, make some noise. When I say he's respected in the rap community, he is. So in this interview, he goes on to talk about how he forgave Puffy, how they talked, and he has no more animosity. And I don't know how he can do that. I don't know how he can do that. Right. No hatred in his heart. He don't want the case reopened. He said that will go back to a life that he doesn't want to go back to. He's a changed man. Right. Got to respect that. 10 years and you come back out with no animosity in your heart. And most of the time, no offense. When people go to prison, they come out a better criminal. Yeah. He turned it around. So let's talk about what, did you want to say anything for our move on to talk about oh, what? No, no, no. I'm just saying like, you can't find some of those people and it's good if you can erase that hatred, you know, and whatever and move on. I think he served his time, realized when he getting out, he's changing his life and he going to let go of the past. So, you know. I, I, you got to give it up to him. You just got to give it up. So I'm trying to pull it up right now. You know what? Here's the thing I should do. I should try uh, preloading this stuff before I come on here. <laughs> I've been doing this how long? And I still am a mess. Let's hear it. Love him, love him, love him, love him. Can't hear. Let's do that. When there's a loose women's rights, equal rights, uh, gender equality. Oh, she had to run to the States because she's afraid of her life. That's what she's saying. No, we don't really believe that. Carry on, Prime Minister. That, that's what we need for the, the focus on. What an entertainer who has nothing to do with politics, what he's, and he's facing accusations. He has not been convicted of anything. Uh, nothing has been proven, even in a civil court where the threshold is much lower. I just... I obliged you, you know, just to share that certainly it has opened wounds for me, but I don't know. I'm not telling you the veracity of it. I maintain that I never shoot nobody, um, that there were other guns there. I always said that. That has not changed. And that is the testimony that came out. Um, from, yes, welcome back. Documents were never removed. Uh, so there was never any forensic testing to say who it was. Uh, but the victims are vindicating me. Uh, witnesses are vindicating me. But I have I have moved on. I, I'm not trying to relive that. Uh, and, and so I am appreciative of whatever contributions uh, Diddy has made um, to help the people of Belize. Uh, I wish him well. I pray for him and I pray for the alleged victims. And, and if, if it is true, may justice be served. If it is not... Um, it's a tragedy because a global icon um, would have been destroyed. Have you spoken? First of all, I want to say, Shine was raised in New York. I believe it was the Bronx. Now he was talking like he, he's from Belize. When did he get an accent? <laughs> oh, so, I mean, he's been back over there for a while now. Yeah, it has been. Yeah. You know. Um, so I keep telling you guys, he, and I don't blame him. Where his life is today, he should be very proud of himself. And he recognizes that the street life will only take you to certain places that's uh, six feet under in prison. Mm -hmm. And so he wants, you know, and, and, and I just the whole thing was bad because like uh, Nori said, when he went in, he was in his prime. Uh -huh. For the rap years, if he was going to be, you know, in the rap game and everybody loved his voice. And then you go away in your prime and then you come back out and you're still not hostile. What are your thoughts on Shine before we move on? Um, my thought is this, like, I was glad I seen this video because I've seen a lot of people chattering about Shine is reopening a case. Shine is going out to P. Diddy. Ain't nothing that man said 
in there that, that shows me that he's going out to P. Diddy. If anything, the question was asked to him, I think, earlier, do you think it would mess up your reputation by being friends with him? He said no, because, one, the man ain't been charged with nothing. You know, and all these things, right? But he was saying that he ain't just coming out today saying he didn't hit the person in the face, right? Mm -hmm. He said he always claimed his innocence, but he did the time for it. He never mm -hmm. said that he was going back reopening a case. None of that. He said, and he goes on with it and said that Diddy has supported him and some of the things he's doing over there in Belize. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, and he's not looking back to that. And he said that, yeah, the victim's coming out now saying he wasn't the one. He feel vindicated. But he never said that he's uh, going to try to reopen anything. Uh, Naomi said that uh, Diddy took out Craig Matt. Now, yeah, you well, I don't know. I mean, how did he pass? Like, he was young, know. right? I don't I remember Craig Mack as a rapper, but I don't know how he passed or anything like that. Thank you, Naomi. Uh, that's what makes sense. These stupid <laughs> who care. What does PID? These stupid who care about having respect in the industry. Wow. What an accomplishment to have among scum. <laughs> Yeah. Such a low bar. Yeah, I mean, that whole street code thing, I'm not knocking people live their life the way they want to live, but you're living up to false expectations. Like, ain't no way I would have went down for anybody. You know, it's only two ways that your life is going to end up when you're in the street game. And, and that includes Puffy, too. That's either six feet under or in prison, period. Right, and, no. and and Puffy just because he got a suit with money, he a thug too, in my opinion. Humble. Right. I know he's innocent until proven guilty. I got that, but you know, I really, really believe you know he was about that life. I don't. Do I think that Diddy personally took Tupac out? No, but you you arranged it, so it's a mess. Well, no, that's the whole thing. The mob never do it personally. Sometimes mm -hmm. you hire people, mm -hmm. but. All that, like I said, we'll just see with that. And we probably start finding out something in a year if they're going to do something or not or whatever. But it's going to take a little while. Hey, nosy. Okay. Uh, Alexis says, why didn't Shine speak up when the victim said it was Diddy? Instead, he said she was lying. Well, okay. So at first, he was under the impression that Diddy was going to do it. He talks about this in the interview. At first, he was under the impression, we're just going to do this and say this and whatever their plan was. He had no idea that Diddy was going to turn on him, start paying people off, right? lying on him. He had no idea. But when he went to prison, at the end, he was, I mean, at the end of the trial, he started saying, I didn't do it. But, you know, it just sounds like, okay. Whatever mm -hmm. he and he's been saying it. He did an interview. I should have showed this interview. He did an interview with MTV and he was saying, I did not do it. I am an innocent man. And at that time, Puff was at his prime. Nobody would figure even thought about or associate him with being a thug that goes taking people's lives out. Nobody knew it back then. So did nobody listen to him? That's sad though. Ain't it sad? Yeah, it's crazy. I know Craig's Ma Max Widow. Diddy did not take him out. Oh, oh. okay. Hey, Nosy, how you doing? I'm, I'm gonna call you later. I haven't. I've been thinking about you. Um, it's just a mess. It's just a mess. But anyway, I think Shine is in a great place in his life. He doesn't want to rehash this old stuff. And I still say to this day, if and when they take down Diddy, it's gonna be for from a federal the feds. I don't right, think right. the Rodney case is going to bring him down. It's going to be the feds. Right. That's exactly. just my opinion. I mean, that's the only way it could go. I, mean, I think the rest of them is just, in my opinion, just chasing money, throwing out allegations. But I, I think if something was to happen, charges come down. It's not, well, charges ain't going to come from a civil case anyway. It's just that. That's but, yeah. All right. All right. Oh, I got 10 minutes. Okay, let's talk about DJ Academics and Donald Trump Jr. Okay, now I know I got some Republicans in the chat. I'm not telling anybody who to vote for. I'm telling <laughs> you about 
this interview mm-hmm. and how, why it made me so damn mad. And I'm going to show it in a little bit. What made me mad is that Donald Trump Jr. was acting like he was, th- that he hangs out with Diddy, people of that stature. Brother Tyrone like, on the corner. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, I hang out with black people all the time. Uh, he was drinking a beer, smoking a, a cigarette, making it look like it was a blunt. And for me, that's offensive. Don't play the black card because you want people to vote for your father. Then he starts saying crazy shit. Like Kim Porter was very close to a girlfriend of his. his ex-wife, I think. Yeah. And, and she used to come to... Ken used to go to her all the time and talk about all the stuff that Diddy was doing. Okay, so you had information about Diddy doing illegal stuff and you didn't say nothing about it. And your father's the president of the United States. <laughs> you didn't say nothing. Nothing. Don't pee on my leg and tell me that it's raining. You don't have to act like you are black for people to vote for you. Cut it out. Or even act like you care at this point. I mean, that that's the whole thing. I mean, before all this, if it wasn't an election year, he probably would have never gave him the interview. I mean, listen. Be real. Be real. Don't do that. And it makes me really, really mad. And I'm not telling black people don't vote for Donald Trump. But I, you got to have a reason. You have. To, it has to make sense. Somebody can't buy you a couple of burgers or chick-fil-a burgers and then that changes your mind mm-hmm. politics is real you have to have something in this country that you stand for and that's what you vote on huh? but they're saying that donald trump knew that he cannot win this presidency election without the black vote so he opens an app called rumble he gets dj academics over there on his side and it's working like a charm Stupid red, that's what I call sexy red, said, uh, I, I, Trump is cold. I just want him to get people out of jail. Some people deserve to be in jail, Miss Red. <laughs> what, you saying that because your boyfriend's locked up? What did he do? I'm voting for Trump because he uh, gives out stimulus checks. Swallowed up. Have you ever been swallowed up? <laughs> It's insane. You make yourself sound stupid. Then DJ Academic starts talking about NBA Youngboy because NBA Youngboy is falsely accusing. What? What? You're voting for a president of the United States based on him releasing prisoners that are your friends. Mm-hmm. It's, 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 what it's, I got out of it, out of like that interview, I just watched it, right? And do I think uh, Trump Jr. would have been there if if it wasn't election season. My mind's telling me no. He's acting black. I got to show you guys. He's smoking a, a cigar um, like it was a blunt. He's drinking a beer. It's, it, 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 did you hear when Donald Trump said, oh, since this, since I've been, um, since these lawsuits, now I know how you people feel. Mm-hmm. The way we criminalize you all these years, but now I know the feeling. And then <laughs> Trump Jr., right? See, now this is what throws me off. Now he all of a sudden care about the life of a black. Now you feel like your situation is equal to a black because his father got raided, Giddy got raided, and he That's won't baby. Be- I was getting to that. Okay, go ahead. Now I can really relate to you black people because now these things are happening to my father. Like, newsflash, we all don't get our houses raided. Okay, so stop with the you people. If he say you people one more damn time, I I just can't take it. So if you're going to vote for Trump, have a reason. That makes sense to adults. I ask... They asked sexy red, name one policy that Donald Trump has that you like. She couldn't name it. This what 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 are you going for? What you know, what what do you want to happen during his presidency? She can't say nothing. So stop making yourself look ignorant. And if you're gonna vote for Trump, then tell us why. A legit reason. Right. I mean, is is that and how do you vote for a man that won't let your people Black people rent his rental properties. 
and is active as Sexy Red is, she might want to keep her women's rights. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Women's That's rights. Like saying. that doesn't matter to you. Just be smart about it. Be smart about it. Don't bring yourself on television, making yourself look like a fool. Anyway, so I'm gonna give you a sample because I didn't have time to download the whole thing. That's why I was a little bit late. I'm sorry. I was doing that stuff for uh, Love and Marriage Huntsville. I mean, I was offended. You guys tell me if you're offended. Like, okay, you was at the parties. He said, he, I was at the parties. We were at the parties. You know, all of it. You know, I went to all the parties. So was you at the freak-offs too? What are you talking about? He just was trying to be extra cool and I just wasn't feeling it. It's not like my dad was there with right? a gun, it was, but they did the same thing, right? You know, on January 6th, like, Donald Trump tried taking over the beast, you know, the, the presidential vehicle. He was going to drive. Down. This is supposed to be him relating to black people because, you know, he his father got raided and, you know, we get raided all the time. Downtown, like, and they, they have people like, you know, before Congress be like, this happened. And then they won't call the people who were in the car. Right. They don't ask them what actually happened. And so they have the this hearsay from these people. And then like, oh, what was it? Like three weeks ago, four weeks ago, they finally had, you know, asked the people in the car. No, that never happened. That's ridiculous. Like I was like, hey, man, if he hijacked the beast and took out like a couple of young fit secret service guys, I'm like, I'm I like a more than, you know, like, yeah. that, may, that may not be a negative, but like it's clearly bullshit and it didn't matter. Uh, you know, so that. Why does that offend me? Now he can relate to black people. Because his dad was yeah. rated too. Why does that offend me? Right, because he's on there now and say, hey, you know what? I know what y'all been going through, but my father has been treated like a ninja also. <laughs> <laughs> now, now what he's telling me. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I feel you, man. It happened to us too. It's how I, I really got offended. I really got offended by it. Don't act black. Be yourself. And state your point. I doubt that you were at Diddy's parties when it turned into a damn freak off. What are you saying? And how come we didn't know that your ex-wife was good friends with Ken Porter? And if you suspected him of being a villain all this time, why didn't you go to the police or your father, who was president of the United States? He didn't do that. But then he did say, well, that's when, you know, I knew something was right. And I had to distance myself from that. Child, yeah, mm -hmm. I can't. But anyway, so that's all I had to talk about today. Let's take these uh, few comments. V, you're still here. <laughs> I bet he was there, Sherelle. He didn't leave. LOL. He claims he wasn't there. Thank you, Sherelle. He also said this too, right? Just to make it seem like I don't know how. If Diddy did, I don't understand. I had to distance myself. How could he do that? As if your daddy ain't on trial today. <laughs> your father on trial yeah. today. Yeah. And what do your mother think about it? Like, and, just, uh, like TJ says the they're drinking the liberal Kool-Aid. That's offensive. If I feel offended because somebody are making racial comparisons, that should be validated. That's really rude. Well, are you African American? Do you want to be one of those people that he could relate to now that he's in trouble with the law? Because y'all always in trouble with the law. He said uh, his so much class. wisely. He um, his that's what smart people did. Distance themselves. They couldn't stop the machine. Diddy was getting away with ish 30 years ago. You know, one of the things everybody's talking about Diddy now, I just want to say this because I, I always forget to mention it. On the first case, that they have with the girl back in the 90s. Aaron Hall was also supposed to be one of the people that art her. Why is it his name is included in these lawsuits? Why does he get to go around and art people and, and not get, be held accountable for it? Mm -hmm. so much. But I mean, uh, Trump Jr. tried to act like his, dad, his daddy had so much class and elegance. He said <sighs> that, yeah. You know, and people always want to tie him to Epstein. And Epstein was at Mar-a-Lago years ago. And my father didn't like his behavior and how he treated people. So he had him banned from the club. Then my father got on that travel bus and then started grabbing women by the 
<laughs> Grabbing women by the peas. Anyway, it, it, it got to be a joke. Like he acting like his father is Saint Paul, John Paul the Third or something. No, it's not. Uh, forget that he was trying to act black. The current administration is using our taxpayer money to fund an entire war in the Middle East. Meanwhile, infrastructure is falling apart. That's true. That's true. That's, That's true. true. Yeah. Aaron Hall may be cooperating with the FBI. Why so silent? I hope he is. But you know, Aaron Hall, did you guys see the interview the Vlad did that he's a pimp and he caught he's just they're trying to get money out of Diddy. Yeah, you're talking about Trumpnum. Yeah. Oh, is it what? That's what I think. Who, who do you uh, think she's talking about? I mean, I think she's talking about the civil case. Yeah, Lil Rod. That, 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 that's why I that wasn't that. acting black, that was acting ignorant. It sure was. I don't feel comfortable fighting for Biden or Trump. Neither one of them is fighting for us. Black America, we got to stop this. Let me tell you something about this war. And then I'm going to go. I shouldn't be talking about this, but it's in my heart. War is ugly. I just hate it. I just hate it. You know what I mean? Like, No, I agree. You went to war. Maybe that's why I take a war more serious because of you sharing your experiences with us. Mm -hmm. War is ugly. War destroys lives. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. just a lot. I mean, for the politicians, it's just a game. It's, it's just a game of chess. But for the soldiers, it's reality and civilians, casualties, and stuff like that. But I don't want to. Yeah, we're not going to get into all that. It's just ugly. And I'm not taking a side. I just want it to stop. Please. And, no, and I feel what this person's saying too. Like, I'm not even saying, you know, Biden is all that neither, because I think a lot of them can do a whole lot more. Mm -hmm. But I guess I'm just trying to take the best out of two evils, if that's a saying. I just wanted to stop, yeah. you know, with you guys should let Perry come on one day. You did it one time before and just talk about how ugly it is and how nobody wins. Nobody right. wins. Mm -mm. All right, you guys. Um, we'll see you tomorrow. I'll be back in 10 minutes to talk about uh, Love and Marriage Huntsville and what I find out about Melody Hope. All right. See you guys later. Bye. Bye.